welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video you will all have to bear with me a little bit today i have now got my new phone uh, iphone x so this should make a lot lot better videos and i should be able to record for a lot lot longer now i know quite a lot of you do keep asking for longer videos that you enjoy them more it's a lot more content and i've upgraded the phone so that i am able to do that i am using the same app to record uh, but i've just noticed that it does automatically keep coming on on its own so if there is any mistakes just bear with me i am obviously all new to it and i'll be working out as i go along today we're going to be doing the airbag kit in the fiesta um, and i'm going to start with the driver's airbag removing that but first of all i have already done it off camera the most important part about working on any of these airbags or the inside of a car even though they have deployed is disconnect the battery the battery has now been disconnected so i'm going to go ahead and remove this airbag in order to remove this airbag there is actually tiny little slots just in the side of the steering wheel here and they're actually sealed but what i need to do is pierce those you push the screwdriver in look for a pin uh, where you actually feel for the pin there is a little pin in the back of there I have already re removed it on the other car. Um, you need to find that pin, push it in. You will feel it when you get to it, and the airbag should just pop out. So I am going to put the phone down. Sorry, that side has just popped out anyway. So I'm going to go ahead, go to the other side, get that popped out, and come straight back. So, yeah, basically just push both of those clips in through those little holes, and then out it comes. We'll get that unplugged and we'll start getting the steering wheel off. And then I'm gonna be moving on to all the covers. We get all the covers out of the way first, like this cover, we get the stereo removed. The center console is very important to get out of the way because the dashboard comes this way. We'll remove all the heater controls, um, glove box, etc., And we'll just keep moving through step by step. I'll keep coming in and out and showing you what bits I'm removing. And then we'll go around, undo the dashboard and remove the dash. I do have the new driver's airbag in my hand. Um, I am holding the, the phone so I can't show too much. But if you can see this little clip here is actually broken and it is in quite bad condition, all these little lugs on here. So I've just looked at the old one and you can undo the four screws and I was able to remove that back piece. So I am going to unscrew the back piece off of this one and fit the original. I think that that's going to be for the best otherwise it's not going to sit in there properly because of that broken lug on the bottom so that is now all bolted on there and all correct it's got all three lugs on it and it will fit in there nice and uh, snug i was a bit worried about that one because the bottom lug wouldn't clip in and if this airbag was to go off somebody was to have an accident there is a chance that that airbag would fly out as it was going off so just to do things a hundred percent that's the old airbag anyway, it's absolutely no good. So we've used that casing off the back and that is now fine. I'll store that in the back, that's gonna be the last thing we do. I'm just gonna go ahead now, off camera, is absolutely no reason to do it on camera. Go round and start removing all of the trims, stacking them up nicely in the back of the car. I'm gonna be removing the stereo, removing the display screen, removing the the clocks the binnacle whatever you'd like to call it remove the steering wheel this is all straightforward stuff there's no reason to film it it's just literally nuts and a few little screws i'm going to get on get some of that stripped out and then keep coming back i'll be back in a sec i appreciate you're not watching it live obviously i have to keep pausing it but they really do take minutes to strip out i mean i took the one out of the blue car in 45 minutes and it was quite funny that somebody said there's no way you did that in 45 minutes and genuinely they just don't take long once you get cracking 90 percent of it is actually clips and then the rest of it is just a few little screws and things just become loose like that you unplug it and it's done the center console there there's two clips for the uh, inside panels you take those out and they're all on poppers they just pop out then the center console you'll see the usb i've just popped it out of the little holder disconnected the uh, aux socket and also the cigarette lighter and that just literally pulls out 
and it's now in the back of the car. I'll pile everything up in the back of the car, get the dashboard removed. I'll, I mean, I'll just carry on and I'll be back shortly. I just wanted to show this part because it makes me laugh every time. People obviously see that stereo and think that's a really, really big stereo, but that is actually it. Very, very thin, very clever piece of equipment. Obviously, the CD player is in there behind it, but that is your actual radio and stereo. Just another part, definitely worth mentioning. Because this car's got climate control, there is two plugs. There is no cables. They're very, very awkward to do for your temperature on a normal car. When you've got digital cl climate control, it is all electric and very, very simple to do. As you can see, I've now been on this about 20 minutes and it is just coming to coming apart very, very easy. And uh, I'm probably looking, I've got to be a little bit more careful on this car, removing stuff than I was on the blue car, obviously, because I don't want to scratch anything, scratch the radio or anything like that. That's now all removed, but I'll carry on and I'll let you know how long it's took by the end of the video. With the steering wheel, it's a 24 mil socket. Take the key out of the ignition so the steering lock stays on and they're never that tight get that undone and then pull that off get it out of the way because we're now going to move to the binnacle there's a little plastic cover up here we need to pop out it's got one screw in it and i believe there's two down the back there we get those out and pull the whole clocks out now the steering wheel's been removed there's one of these screws underneath and you've got these two here and that will remove the whole cowling i'm going to get that off and then we can get to the speed on clocks. So once those two screws are removed, literally this just pulls out and slides out from that end. Just chuck that in the back and then the bottom cover, that comes off as well. It is getting a little bit caught around that bottom airbag, but that's now removed. And as I said, we've got two screws behind here. We've got one just up in here. We'll get that removed and we'll take the clocks out. So I've just removed all three of those screws and they are a bit tricky. They're very, very tight in there. You need to get them out just enough to get round the back and literally disconnect the plug. Once that's done, we'll move on to the stalks, which is just one 10 mil and it is up under there. You can probably just about see it in there. You undo that and that loosens the whole thing off and then we're able to pull that off. So I've just disconnected the wires. They're all just little push plugs. There's three of those there on the stalks. You've got those two there. Um, the black one came come out of there. The green one from up underneath and the gray one up underneath this side. I've loosened off the screw. You just give them a bit of a wiggle and they pull straight off. And that's got your airbag squib on there all built in. Um, you do need to remove those because obviously the dashboard will not fit over the top of them. I'm going to now remove the few screws that are behind the dashboard i've started removing this i'll also be removing the a pillar cover they're both hooked into the dash both sides get those removed and then come back the light's not brilliant it's uh it's getting quite dim already and it's only about two o'clock in the afternoon but as you can see i've stripped quite a lot out the glove box i've just removed off camera they are literally just two little pins in the bottom here that hold it in and the reason i've stripped that out is because I wanted to show that the passenger airbag is actually bolted in with a metal bracket and this is the, the dashboard itself is actually plastic and rubber but the airbag has to be mounted to a solid metal bracket otherwise it would just fly out the hole when it goes off so I'm going to get in there with me 10 mil I've got it all ready I'm going to get those disconnected and we'll get on with it and try and get this dashboard out very very soon Again, you don't have to undo all four, four 10 mils and remove this bracket, but I do because it makes it easier and it fits back on once the dashboard is in. I've unplugged the airbag and just start getting hold of the dash, giving it a little wiggle everywhere around and you'll see it starting to come loose and you'll find the tight points in it and where you need to go next. I'm just gonna take a picture of all of that wiring in the center, exactly where it's clipped in because they are all different all the time. So I want to ensure that that all goes back exactly as it's come out. Let me get back up there and just show you. It's got all clips 
holding it in that's clipped down the way this is all rooted i just want to make sure that i get all that back exactly where it is before i put the new dash in and then guide it all through and push it in the hole so as you can see i've now loosened everything off and we're pretty loose there now i've got a little metal bracket caught just this side i'm going to run hook that and then obviously pull it out the car off camera because i'm going to need two hands that is now out but the last last part of the puzzle is the aerial actually runs from one side right to the other so you do have to get in there and pull it all off the clips I'll just free those wires up but as you can see now that is completely out i just need to go around the other side and pull that through i will walk around now try and show as much of it as i can but yeah sorry guys it's going to be a bit awkward to uh man maneuver this out there we go one dashboard removed let's get in there get all that aerial clipped up check through everything and get that other dashboard put in there and get it all zipped up today so these dashboards they are the same but obviously different cars have different things on them um, this one has got the hole here for the little sensor which i have here and it also has a little sensor in here which i've now just drilled out the hole and fitted in this dash i've gone to fit this one but unfortunately the drill has gone flat and it will take at least 20 minutes before that drill's got enough in it to do that so it is quite far back on the dash let me just spin the old one over and show you it's going to be quite close to the windscreen and once the dashboard's in there that would be too hard to drill but fortunately we have got to have the windscreen replaced and it'll be coming later in the week to do that so what i plan on doing is getting the dash fitted and then when he whips the windscreen out and starts cleaning up the area i can get straight in there with my drill drill that out and get that pop straight in there so i'm going to grab hold of this get up there and start getting it put in so guys as you can see i've got that all nicely placed in there and this is pretty much just where the reverse process starts I've started locating them all, sticking them all back where they should be. And uh, I'll just be slowly but surely putting it all back together. I'll start with all the little screws first, the main screws to hold it in. And then after I've got all of those secure, I'll go ahead and start putting the radio back in, the screen, the clocks, all that kind of stuff. And just carry on from there and I'll just keep updating you. It's all going back together very very simple very easy it's nice once you've done quite a few and you work out how simple they are to get out i've just dis i've just connected the battery back up plugged everything in just tested that it's all working absolutely fine and everything seems to be fine so i'm just going to carry on start building all this area back up the stalks the cowling the steering wheel the driver's airbag all that stuff and i'll just keep updating updating really moving along with the uh, progress of putting this all back together now everything's all bolted in here the stalks are all bolted back on the screens all bolted down the stereos all bolted in I'm just going to put all the finishing trims back on the door for the glove box the interior trim up here and the trims down here I'm probably going to leave those off actually those trims down there because I'm, I am still going to have to do the seat belts on this car they are locked up both sides so they're going to need replacing i've got them in the other car so i'll probably be putting those on tomorrow really is starting to come together now it has just started raining though so hopefully i do get this nipped in the bud before the end of the day and before this rain really starts pouring down so there we go absolutely incredible couple of hours and that is that airbag kit completely fitted the airbag light will still be on because the seat belts are locked up that seat belt has gone off while somebody's been wearing it and the other side i'll just move the chair forward so that you can see 
is absolutely locked tight. I will have to cut that with a Stanley knife in order to get that to release so that I can undo that. Again, quite simple. I don't mind showing that on the video uh, tomorrow, ch changing those if it's required. But a couple of hours, it's really made a difference. The car's all back together now. I need to get the windscreen done. Just waiting on a set of number plates. I don't bother waiting for the logbook, going to Halfords or an approved garage. You can order show plates, legal, road legal show plates on eBay for $13.99 a set. You've seen how many cars that I've brought without, bought without number plates. So I'll just order a set from there and they come pretty much straight away. So I've got a couple of sets of number plates. Sorry, one set of number plates come in for the car. Gonna get the windscreen done and that should be it. I've got a tyre, just need to get it put on the wheel. If anybody missed it last time, the front is, I just need to put some clips in that, but the front has all been repaired. If anyone missed the video, came out, come out really nice. I've got a little cap to put on here and the little cap to put on there. I only got this cap yesterday and it's white. So I have had to drop that up the paint shop to get it done. But all in all, very very straightforward repair very easy to do and again anybody could do this in the comfort of their own garage it's not rocket science it's really not difficult to do and once you start taking it out you really will get the hang of where everything's got to go i would turn a few bits on but i can't turn the radio on because obviously it's um copyright but i can turn the ignition on it's not going to start up because yeah, the battery is too dead. It has been sat on the back of the truck and I've just changed the airbag kit on the back of the truck. It probably would have made sense actually to take it off the truck and do it, but it's done now and, and that is it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I know a lot of you have been looking forward to watching me do this. It is a shame that I haven't been able to sit there and record the whole thing but that would be quite a process. Taking it out the other car it was quite quick. Taking this one out this morning was even quicker. But when it comes to fitting, removing a kit and fitting a kit, it's probably a good two and a half hours work. I don't want to cause any scratches around the stereo or any damage putting it back together because this is the permanent dash that's going to be staying in here. Um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm always doing different stuff and I'm sure I will do something that you will enjoy and I'm sure that I will do a car in the future that you will enjoy. I am going to do a little quick bit on the blue Ford Fiesta. Everybody keeps asking about, you know, the car keeps on giving. I just want to show what is left of the car and what I think we can still repair out of this car. So I still haven't used the complete rad pack and front panel and there's no damage on that whatsoever. So there's a front ender car there that we could fix. We know the wings are 20 pound each. I've got that door that is absolutely spotless with a mirror, all the glass in the car. There's no damage on any of the glass. I've got that boot lid and the back bumper that's complete and that's got no damage on it. In here somewhere, I'd probably have to dig through everything because there's all the inserts for the dash. I actually have a complete headlight with no damage on it. I have the two rear lights. I have a rear beam that hasn't been hit. As you can see, the damage was on that quarter, on that door and on that wing. If you remember, I'll give 225 pound for this car and I have already re now repaired three cars with this car. I've just removed the airbag kit and fitted it in that red car. Now that would have been £250 on its own. So there's the car paid for. And if you watched last time, I used all the suspension and quite a lot of other stuff for the other car that's gone. And I've used various bits for, I'm not, I can't remember, I'm not gonna lie, it's quite a few a uh, few cars I'll get through and I can't remember what cars I've repaired with it but you've seen me repair two cars and I've just put that airbag kit into that little red Fiesta unfortunately 
none of the uh, the front wing was already gone off the Blue Fiesta, but I will do a breakdown on that Blue Fiesta, on what I've taken off it, how much it would have come to, and how much I think I've saved by buying that car. Also, as you can see next to it, is the little Renault 5. Quite a few of you do still ask what's going on with that. That car actually sold, um, and I'm gonna be getting into that in a video tomorrow or Wednesday because it's being collected and I'm gonna do a whole day on it. And quite some exciting stuff happened with this car and I'll be filling you all in on Wednesday, maybe tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. I hope you do enjoy the longer film today. It's probably the longest one I've ever done. I have a fantastic memory on this phone now. I really don't know if it's gonna be a lot better, but I am hoping it is. The camera's 10 times better than the one I had. I've gone from an iPhone 6 to an iPhone X. Uh, the recording of it, everything should be bang on. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below about any of it as usual. That's gonna be a wrap for today, guys. Like I said a minute ago, please leave your comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And if you do enjoy my videos, give them the thumbs up because it really does help the channel grow. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.